So Sophie had asked me to come talk about uh, how we measure household decision making uh, specifically within the WEA. Um, and uh, in particular, the, the latest version of the WEA, this um, project level um, WEA, which is a um, kind of an adaptation of the WEA uh, to a, uh, um, a project uh, in, in terms of project evaluation. Um, so I think where this starts for us um, is uh, this definition of empowerment that I have here uh, that comes from Nyla Kabir. Uh, so Nyla Kabir defines um, empowerment as the expansion in people's ability to make strategic life choices, to exercise agency, um, in a context where this ability was previously denied to them. Um, so she thinks about this as a um, process of change involving uh, these three interrelated dimen uh, dimensions that I have shown up here. Um, so resources here includes the various uh, material, human, and social resources uh, that serve to enhance people's ability to uh, exercise choice. Um, agency uh, refers to uh, an individual's pers ability to make strategic choices, to define goals, and to act upon them. Uh, especially, again, in contexts where this uh, ability was previously denied to them. Um, achievements are then the uh, achievement of these personal goals. Uh, so in the WEA, what we're aiming to measure is um, agency. Uh, we do this in several different ways across several different types of questions and indicators, uh, but uh, where it's most straightforward, the most straightforward way to measure agency uh, is decision making. Um, so uh, we, we measure decision making with respect to uh, a few different um, uh, domains uh, of uh, women's involvement. Um, production, uh, control over income, um, asset ownership, and then credit. Uh, today I'm going to, um, because I don't have time to go into how we measure uh, also decision making with respect to each of these, we're going to talk, we're going to pull out one example. And so this is um, input and productive decisions, uh, which is one of the indicators of the WEA. Um, so what I have shown here is kind of a, uh, pulled out of the, the survey questionnaire. Um, we have four questions here uh, that start with asking whether uh, the individual has participated in a particular activity. We ask these questions, we ask um, all four of these questions, actually more than that in the actual questionnaire, about um, several different agricultural and non-agricultural agri um, uh, domains or activities. For example, we ask about crop production, we ask about livestock raising, we ask about um, non-farm uh, business activities. There's a, there's a, a longer list that we can, that depending on the, the context gets more disaggregated or, or, or uh, collapse it a little bit. So we start um, by asking whether or not someone uh, participates in these activities, and then if so, then we delve into uh, the decision making around that. Um, the first question we ask is, is simply um, who makes the decision, who normally takes, makes this decision. Uh, and then we, we, the important thing here is we allow for multiple respondents. So it's, um, uh, we're trying to, we, we, we want to we want to capture both sole decision making or, m but more importantly, we want to capture wider participation in that decision from members of the household. Um, so we could stop here. We know who makes the decision. Why do you want to, why do you care about anything else? Um, this goes back to what, what Sophie kind of alluded to earlier, where there's some ambiguity in measuring decision making. When, when, especially when it's joint decision making, we don't really know what this means. So we have a couple other questions here that kind of get at that. The first is, uh, so we want to know how much, it, how much input did you have in making um, this decision. So this is really trying to get at, so it's a decision that, you know, a couple like you make with your spouse. Um, what does that mean when you have this, when you make this joint decision making decision with them? Is it, um, you know, I sat down, we talked about it, I told my wife, this is what we're going to do, that's a joint decision. Um, or is it we actually um, hash it out and um, come to a, um, something we both agree on? Um, so that's why we want to, we have this third question here that asks about input. 
There's another part of this, though, that, it, that again, Sophie kind of uh, talked about, where um, not choosing not to make the decision can in itself be empowering or, or reflect agency. So you can think about the decision we always uh, give as, as an example is, um, I'd like each night choosing what we're going to eat for dinner. I'd like that. I'd like the meal I want to show up on my plate, but I'd rather not have to every night make that decision. Or, so you can think about, um, there may, and so Sophie talked about this, you can think about there's decisions that we would prefer to make and there's decisions we would prefer someone else made for us that still reflected our preferences. Um, so we try to get at that with this question then that uh, diagnosed, that asks, so, you know, uh, to what extent do you feel you could participate in this decision if you wanted to? Um, so what we're trying to do in the way, at least, is we, it's, the, the takeaway here is it's measure, it's complicated to measure decision making. You can't, re, you may not get at it, you know, which is one question, you may need to triangulate it uh, using kind of uh, multiple questions. I'm over my time, so I'm going to stop, um, but hopefully we can have some richer discussion about this um, afterwards. Uh, yeah.